I'm gonna go ahead and get started by opening a file. I'm gonna just come up here to file, open. I'm gonna to navigate to where I saved my mounting bracket. These are parts that are available to you in the same area where these videos were downloaded. I'm gonna open up the mounting bracket dot vnc dot vnc is the extension for gibbscam files let's go ahead and go through the menus across the top here's our file edit view modify so file open save this is pretty straightforward as far as windows edit if you want to edit it deselect selection things like that cut and copy and paste if we want to change the view or what we see or what's visible and then modify, move, translate, things like that. Now I'm not gonna go through every one of these settings. This is just a quick start video to help you get some tool path on the part. But there are a few of these icons that are pretty important. Let me show you the document control. I'm gonna go ahead and click on there. Here's where I set my machine. I have a Haas VF2 as my default machine on here, and it gives me the dimensions for my stock. I can modify my stock here, making it bigger or smaller. Also, my view palette. As I open my view palette, I can actually grab it by the side and move it anywhere I'd like. This palette allows me to change to the top view, the front view, the side view, isometric. It'll also redraw it, or the previous view, or fit to screen. These options are also available if you hover over the world coordinate system in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. As you work more with GibbsCam, you'll have to make new coordinate systems, modify those coordinate systems, and then make work groups. If you have multiple solids, we use what's called a body bag to take those solids and put them in a non-visible location without deleting them. Here's our geometry palette our dimension palette, and then surfacing in solids. This one opens up our tool list right here to the left. This is a set of tiles that contain our tools. Next is our cam list, which opens up two palettes. Over here, we have our processes, and then on the right, we have our operations. Processes are operations that are still being worked on. This is kind of like the, the waiting area where you can edit and modify processes before making them into operations and posting them out. Let's go ahead and start with creating a tool. I'm gonna to double click on tool tile number one up in the upper left hand corner. And you can see that this opens up my tool menu. I wanna go ahead and just rough this part out. I'm not gonna worry about holding it right now or anything like that. I just wanna show everyone how to put tool path on a part. Selecting the geometry, selecting the tools, things like that. So here's the tool. We're just gonna say it's a roughing end mill. Let's go ahead and say that that's three inches total length. And we'll say that the flute length is one inch. Here we can also assign tool holders. There are a set of tool holders that come standard. You can see as I'm clicking through these with GibbsCam. We're gonna say the length out of holder is going to be two inches. Let's go ahead and close that out. It automatically saves, so there's our half inch roughing end mill. Now I'm gonna come down to my processes. I'm gonna double click on my first process tab. You can see here I have a bunch of choices. I can choose between drilling holes or reaming or tapping doing a contour, roughing, threading, and then we get into our multi-axis, three-axis surfacing, and then five-axis and plunge roughing, and of course, volume mill. I wanna go ahead and rough this part out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on roughing. You can see that I have my tool available right here. Now, this list will feature all of the tools that I have listed in my tool palette. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that half-inch end mill. And now, here's where the rubber hits the road. This is where all the settings are. Everything you need to machine this part, all the settings and things like that, are inside of this window using these tabs across the top.
So again, I'm not gonna go through every setting in this. I just wanna go over just the highlighted ones just to help you get some tool path on this part and then go through and get some extra training or you can go through it on your own to determine how much of these settings you're going to use. If we look here on the left-hand side, here is the speeds and feeds and also stock to leave. We know that it's roughing, so Gibbs Cam is asking us how much stock we would like to leave on pockets, on islands, in the Z, on the sides, things like that. Up here in the upper right is where we set the rapids and the top and the bottom of our tool path. For the rapids, I just double click to highlight the selection window. I'm gonna hold the Alt key down and click on the top of the part. You can see that Gibbs Cam automatically takes that distance from my XYZ coordinate system and inserts it into that box. Now that's the distance from the bottom, from the Z0 to the top of the part. This is my rapid, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit to that. We'll just say 0.8. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my retracts the same. Now what I wanna do is I want to tell Gibbs Cam where my toolpath is going to start and on how low I want it to go. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and click on the top, that's 0.625. You can also manually put in numbers here if you want to go a little bit higher or maybe a little bit lower where your toolpath starts. I want my toolpath to end on my XYZ zero or on my Z zero, so I'm gonna leave that zero. Right below that is the number of steps and the number of passes. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like with just one pass. Now I have a couple options to calculate this toolpath. I can hit this green check mark inside of my process window that says do it. I can come down here to the left side to my do it button. Or I can right click on the part and click do it. But first, let's make sure that we select the geometry you wanna cut. These buttons in the center of the window are active buttons to show and hide certain parts of the geometry and helps you select parts of the model. Here we can say show geometry. If there's any 2D geometry, it'll show up or hide it. Here's our show dimensions, show holes, show solids, and then how you want this rendered. Right now I have solid faces with a wireframe. This section over here helps you select. This is face selection. If I just want to select a single face, I'm gonna click off the part to deselect, or I can select the entire model. Also, let me click off the part. I can select the edges of the model by activating them. So I want to select the entire model, so I'm going to click on the entire model, and now I'm gonna go ahead and click do it. So here's the tool path that we have. I wanted to cut this part out with one pass going down to my Z0. That's exactly what it did. Because of that, because it's one pass to Z0, it didn't really rough out the middle or these steps. So I want to take these steps a little bit smaller. For my Z step, I'm going to say 100 thousandths. And you can see as soon as I do that, I get the number of passes at seven. You can see when I hit do it, on the right hand side in my operations list, I have four tool paths. And those represent the four corners of that part. Now, if I was to click do it again, I would have another set of tool paths with the new settings. This is helpful if you want to experiment without affecting the original tool paths. I know that I want to take that step down, so instead of clicking do it, I'm gonna select redo. And again, you can hit redo down here in the lower left, or I can just right click on the model and click redo. And this is what the part looks like with that smaller step down. I can also see what this tool path is going to look like in 3D. Up here in the middle of my toolbars, I have machine sim, which is op sim, which is just looking at the operations. Machine sim, if you have a machine model, it'll show the rendering in the machine model itself. 
tool sim will just do it by tool. And then legacy CPR is a um, less graphically enhanced um, representation of what the tool path is going to look like. So I'm going to click Opsim. I'm going to move this window out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and press play. And this gives us that graphic representation of what this tool path is going to look like. We can slow it down by moving this slider and then rewinding and playing. So once we have our tool path set, it's as easy as just coming up here to post process. I would select my post processor and my output file and then post process it. And then I would end up with the G code for my machine. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, please feel free to reach out to us at GibbsCam or give your local GibbsCam reseller a call. Thank you so much.